right, guys, what's going on? Uh, for this video, I'm going to be building the piece of steel that's going to go on this side of the frame. And when the engine is sitting inside here and the exhaust is coming out, I'm going to have to multi-layer this, which means that I'm going to have to put a piece of steel here that's going to be absorbing all the heat and getting hit with the heat in the exhaust and then there's going to be another shroud that's going to be on the other side of here so we're going to have two different pieces of steel here because one's going to be heating, heating up from the exhaust and then the one to protect the rider since the exhaust is going to be coming out right here we don't want anybody's left nut to be cooked especially mine one of the factors behind doing this is that I'm going to have to make sure that whatever steel I use is going to have to be thin enough to the point to where it's going to be able to disperse the heat. So using the sheet metal that I have sitting off to the side here that I use for the Batmobile to be doing that is not going to be a very feasible thing. So the steel that needs to be directly in front or the little piece of paneling that needs to be directly in front of the exhaust is going to have to be real thin stuff. And nothing that I have is real thin. If I had some 22 or 24 gauge, it would probably be a little bit more feasible, but I don't have any of that. So what I'm going to have to use is the tin from this coffee or coffee can. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting this thing all apart, and I'll be using this steel here. Well, tin, actually. I think that's what it is, tin. But, yeah, so that's what, we're, that's what I'm going to be using. Because it's thin enough to help disperse the heat that's going to be coming from the exhaust. What we're going to do get rid of the lid, get rid of all the coffee grounds that are in it. Now we, I got one of these uh, can openers, but the way this can opener works is it cuts from the side, so it removes everything from the side instead of cutting down from the top. rare to find one of these kind of cutters, one of these kind of can openers where it cuts the side instead of the top. So luckily we got one, but if I didn't have this then I would be pulling out one of my cutting wheels and putting it on my grinder thingy. Voila! See? Don't, don't you want me? Good song. Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me? Oh, oh. Can dancing. Can dancing. Voila. Yeah, it's good. Now I can use these parts on my giant robot. Oh wait, that's already been done. Never mind. I need to cut that. And I don't have a tin snips. So, time to pull out the trusty grinding wheel. Or cutting wheel.
the music, and make the commercials occasionally to pay the bill. Thanks. Have you heard? Proactive is better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway. Proactive.com. Yeah. Are you having trouble with your male libido? Well, get yourself a hotter woman then. <laughs> here like this but I'm going to be putting a small little kink in it so I'll be bending it and first things come first I need to make a small little bend up at the top here and bend it back towards us probably eh, maybe a half inch that might sound good wait actually what I should do is I should cut this down cut down to uh, see right about to uh, right about there yeah that looks good uh, same on the other side. Yeah, looks about right. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to. This is where the bar is at, one bar, and the bar would be on the inside. So from the outside of the bar, like that, we're going to measure out two and a half inches. And then over here, we got this measured out two and a half inches. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be cutting those at an angle to come down to the point. So I'm just going to draw a line and cut that piece out. Okay, see, this is what I'm talking about right here. Draw a line straight up. Draw a line straight up. I'm going to cut this off and cut that off. Okay, so there we go. I got those pieces cut off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure down a half inch and I'm going to put a cut right here in this half inch right here. Cut down half inch and cut down half inch. Okay, so I just did that. Cut it down a half inch. Now it's time to put in the bends. Okay, so what I'm going to be using so I've got a sheet metal bender over here, but for people out there who don't have one, I'll show you how you do this. Figure out where your crease is at, where you're going to want to put your bend at. Bend that way. Anyway. Um, we'll make this side here.
make sure. Now, since this stuff is so thin, setting my clamps out wider isn't that pro isn't that big of a deal because the steel is so thin. But if I were to be bending thicker steel, you want the strength to be closest to the steel as you possibly can. So if I was using these clamps and this was like say 18 gauge, I would want to make sure that my clamps are going to be right here because when you go to bend it, if you bend it up or you bend it down, whichever you put stress in the center here and your steel will literally bend up and create a rounded part more in the center of your your sheet metal. Now I'm just doing this by hand and you want to make sure that you try to apply even pressure everywhere and not just not just to the one spot that you're looking for, looking to bend. Now this one on the other hand, I'm going to have to bend up. This is going to be a little bit different. I got all these sharp sharpies here. Now, with this half inch cut that I had in here, I'm going to have to make this little piece bend back towards us. Towards me. Okay, so what I'm going to do here next is this doesn't seem to be. I don't like that. See all that crap? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this down here too slightly. Piece of, I don't have a pair of sheet metal pliers.
So what I did here, bent this back, bent this the opposite way. This doesn't really matter whether this thing is... Where are my damn pliers at? I don't want a sharp. I want a nice round on down here. I'm going to take this and just bend this over all the way down. As you get rid of all those big sharp edge. Of course, you know, you're going to want to, it's probably a good idea to use gloves for something like this, but I don't because I gotta give those haters out there something to bitch about. <laughs> okay, so we got that all bent up. Now, remember when I had to bend that piece back, that half inch? That's how it's gonna be set up. So I'm gonna have this gap right here. Now this piece right here is gonna kinda just cover up the muffler a little bit, help the gases just go straight down, down here. And when I go to put this piece of steel up, or actually it's not going to be this one, but it's going to be a piece of steel like this. It, this is going to be going on here like that. Okay. It's going to be going on there like that. So we're going to have, and it's going to be bent. So the piece of steel that's going to go on here is going to come out slightly and then go down at an angle. So there's going to be a distance between the piece of steel that's going to go back here and between here. So when the air is flowing, it'll be able to flow back behind the engine and take the exhausts out, but it'll also be able to go back on the side here, in between here, and since this is going to be sitting like that, we're also going to have an opening down there. See that opening? So the steel won't come into contact with anything, so we'll have a constant airflow, one driving of course, constant airflow of air coming in, not only getting rid of the exhaust, but also coming in through here, flowing in between here, cooling off this plate, and being able to flow downward. Ooh. I don't know how long this will last, but I have a feeling it will last for a long time and it's not going to get hot hot enough to the point to where the heat's going to be retained in the steel or transfer the heat off into the whole frame and the whole damn thing gets hot that won't happen because it's so thin so now all I got to do is figure out how in the hell I'm going to stick this on here <laughs> oh I'll figure something out maybe I'll put a little uh, bracket right here or something like that right there and screw there and screw up into there or something like that. I've got some self-tapping screws that'll go right up inside of there. Put in some little brackets or something like that that'll hold it in place. I don't think it'll... don't think it's going to uh, vibrate much. But that's the important thing since the exhaust is going to be right here you know, farting out right here. We want this piece of steel to be as thin as we can or made out of some type of steel that's going to be able to disperse the heat fast. Not just absorb the heat from the exhaust. We don't want that. We want the exhaust out of here. And we don't want the exhaust to be burning us while we're driving. So, when I go to start building, when I start putting this sheet metal together, the paneling is going to come right back down up over here, you know, other places. And we know that we don't want it to collide or vibrate next to this stuff because this stuff is going to be positioned underneath the frame. See how that works? Multi-layered paneling so that way you don't get cooked when you're driving. Well, that's what I did today. <laughs> Just that little piece. <laughs>
All right. Oh well, yeah. One of my uh, subscribers um, asked me if I could do some type of translation uh, for the hearing impaired for my videos, and YouTube has a service like that, and um, I decided to try doing it. <laughs> and I don't know what kind of program they use, but it does not work worth crap. After after they asked me about it, I went. Uh, it is an option, so I went to my video of num my video number 15, and I decided decided to enable that. And I had to download s this thing into my computer, and then I had to re-upload it onto the video. Well, man, <laughs> I don't know what kind of program they use, but it doesn't work very good because me, I started watching my video, and everything that I was saying that was popping up on the bottom of the screen was not the crap I was saying. I mean, it was so funny. I had to call Crystal in and have her, you said, watch this, you know, and all the words were all messed up, and it was thrown out, just, just, man, we just, it was so crazy. We started laughing, and, oh, man, we were laughing so hard about what it was saying, what, what the program was saying, I was saying. So if you guys, if you guys, if you guys want a good laugh, go over and watch that part 15 of this build again, and watch that, and it is, but what you have to do is you, when you click play, you go down below where the timeline is at, and you'll see these two little um, uh, insignias in there, the letters CC. If you click on that, it'll enable that, and then it'll work, and you'll be able to see these what what the translation program is thinking that I'm saying, you know, is posting what it thinks I'm saying. It is, it's, it's a kill, man. It is so damn funny. But yeah, if you guys got time, go watch that or go try try that out because it's it's <laughs> I don't know it was it was definitely hilarious. All right, guys, well you guys take it easy and uh, I'm gonna be working on uh, some more stuff on the cart here and I'll be putting out some more videos. All right, so take it easy. Bye bye.